you want to pray first or let me just nah bro <laughs> greetings in the name of jesus christ the living god it's not really going to be the regular intro got a whole guest with me do you want me to put your name in hello thing? my name is Twombe. <laughs> do you want me to put in the thing what thing like in the description or in the title like your name yeah or you know it's cool all right <laughs> all right got the bands right here you know we're just gonna have a discussion not discussion just just talking so yeah. different video so so he had brought up the idea of persecution in the church like current persecution so we're just gonna like talk about that and pretty much yeah so persecution is uh, it's like you see it like some well depending on where you live of course right you may have already encountered persecution you may be going through persecution right or persecution is on on you know the uprising and coming and everything like that right? i think because we live in the united states right that's where we currently are is that we don't necessarily see a lot of persecution in the terms of like we can worship freely right something that we discussed like he told me uh before we made this video was so you and i can go to church can worship for however many hours you worship it could be an hour hour and a half two hours and then you can get in your car or take the bus or walk home and you don't have to worry about somebody coming to kill you right as you are leaving the sanctuary and everything like that but in other countries of course people get killed inside the church is that somebody will come in and they know there's people worshiping jesus and they'll they'll kill them mm. right and so i think it's just i think we, i like I, I think one of the things is I've learned to kind of just be grateful and thankful that I uh, have a place to freely worship God without that, you know, fear of, you know, someone's going to barge in, not even just church, but even your home, right? People will come into your home and kill you inside your home and cut your family's heads off because you're worshiping Jesus. Yeah. And it's, it's like, and sometimes it's the law, like in, um, like certain Muslim countries or certain countries where like they're anti-Christian, yeah. like it's the law that if you find somebody like worshiping Jesus, then like report them and then you know do all this other stuff. So it's like it's it's interesting. I mean, like I would add that we have persecution here too in more developed countries. It just looks different, you know. Um, in certain lower uh, like second or first world countries if they're anti-christian you might get killed or like tortured body parts cut off or burned or whatever or hung or, or whatever it might be um or jailed for just like no reason with a ridiculous amount of bail or no bail but here it's like people that choose to actually believe the bible fully right like we we're just talking about like they 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 might not be able to get services at a certain place yeah. or they might get their place shut down or something like that like a church shut down um like there was it was well it was like five years ago <laughs> with like the homosexuality community was like on the rise and it was like and a bunch of people in california were trying to get uh cakes made for their for their wedding but they're like homosexuals and then the pastors or 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 the uh or the people that would own the cake place for weddings they were Christian. They was that sorry, I don't, you know, like I, I, I can't do that because X, Y, Z, right? Or like people that are like politicians that, um, that, are, uh, that support pro life because like we serve a God of life, not of death, right? Like, why would I want to allow a heathen to openly kill their own flesh and blood? that's made in the image of God and make that lawful. That doesn't make any sense because now your hand is a part of all those deaths. Like whether, like the blood is also, it's like sprinkled onto your head, right? Because yeah. like now that's that crazy. you support that and the person that you voted in actually puts it into law, all the people that practice that law, you were a part of the reason why all those people can practice that. So all those babies getting killed is also also gonna fall on your hand. So like, wow. so there there's like a persecution like that. They they get canceled or they get this. Now they can't feed their family or whatever, right? So, it's it's a whole thing. But I mean like, it, that's the part. I I think even here like you'll get persecuted in like a spe like, in the ways of America. Like I don't know if, like, for you, but for me it was. As soon as I actually got baptized in like Jesus and like the Holy Spirit came to me, 
like I started talking about him and then my friends were like, all right, stop talking about him. And then they stopped really hanging out with me and then all this other stuff. And it was just that like, Ooh. No, that, that I understand uh, is, like you said, you get persecuted and everyone gets persecuted in different ways, but there's persecution in America, right? You get, what is it? Uh, when you're on social media, like you post something and then this will get marked as like hate speech. Oh, right. Yeah. So that that's that's a that's a form of persecution, of course, right? You're not you're not being killed, but you are being lowered, or you're not being given the freedom of expression or freedom of speech, you know, whatever that is. Um, but like, yeah, you said like once you take, once you start walking a spirit filled life, right? Whether it be your friends or even your family members, they'll start looking at you differently. It's like. Oh, why are you dis <laughs> why are you deciding to not pursue this but now you want to i just want to work for god like what does that mean like mm -hmm. you have to help us grow and money and value yeah, yeah. and everything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and so and it, it'll come and so unless you are conscious to the idea that uh even your own family will be against you mm -hmm. you know and we were talking about it is like trials and tribulations will come and that I think he said something that was just uh, powerful earlier. Was that like 99.9% .9 of people don't care about you. <laughs> That's what he said. And that even and then he said even your family members. Like you have even family members who, who don't care about you. And they're in it for their own gain. And that truly like some people really don't have the love of God in them. Which is, which is like of course sad, you know. And he was talking about like lovely rebuking them and everything like that, but it's like it's like just the world we live in, I guess. It yeah, it's uh, I forgot about the family part because like the persecution will like come from them too because they're uh because they're the ones that know you best, right? Like they yeah. wipe your butt, like hopefully they're still there, whatever yeah, else yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. So like when when you start believing the Bible and then you believe the Bible more than they do and you're actually like not giving it up, right? Uh, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this. You're like, wait, what? You were on the track to do this and <laughs> wait, this and then you're wait, gonna do this did, and this. What did you say? Like you said, uh, they read it as it's like a what? Another book? Yeah, like well, this is one of my favorite books that I read and this is like, <laughs> This isn't just a book, bro. Like this is like like life. Like it, it's word. living. It's yeah. alive. Like it actually changes you. Mm -hmm. You know. So like when when I like hear the people that that like okay. So when they became Christian, right? Like oh yeah, you know I'm Christian. This this and this. Like seven years later, I, I'm like the only one my age that like you can find in a church. Like like and you're just like, what happened to all these? I'm a Christian, right? Like, I believe the Bible, right? I, they just, like, start slowly disappearing. And then kind of like what John says, I think it was. Or was it James? It's like they... No, I think it was John. It was, like, First John or something like that. Like, they, 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 they were among us, like, you know, but they were never of us or something like that. Or, like, they left us because they were never of us. Something like that, right? That's first John, yeah. Yeah, so it's like when, when you kind of, like, start getting the fruits of the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and patience and compassion and grace and mercy and self-control and kindness and all these other things, like, your eyes literally open because now he can, he's able to show you more, right? Kind of like what he says when he says, um, like... To, to whom much is given, much shall be required. But he gives you what's required to to handle the much, right? So if you can't handle the little, why would he increase it if that little can't be handled, right? I, that's one of the uh, questions I, I think I asked myself these past couple of days. Is, does God trust me with more? Well, I mean, what the, you is can he, find that out. Through, and, like, what are you doing with what right, you already have? So I was like, does he? You know? So in terms of persecution... <clears throat> Because he he had approached he had approached me about like hey let's do a video together and I was like okay cool and at that time uh, I was like let's talk about persecution because I was watching a sermon series on Revelation uh, specifically Revelations two verses eight through I believe uh, eleven twelve yeah eleven and it was about the church in, in Smyrna where they were getting persecuted. Uh, and they were in a community where, like, most of the population was not Christian, or they were not following the God of Heaven or the God of the Bible. Um, and one of the one of the verses that stuck out is Revelations two ten. It says, "Do not fear any of these, any of those things which you are about to suffer. 
indeed the, de the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life so I just want to hear your, your viewpoint on that, on that verse I mean that, that that's not like See, so so with like all the seven churches, I know that like he talks to like seven churches. He says this, this, and this is good, but this, 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 and this is good, but this, right? So he's like he's like lovingly rebuking them. He's he's like you know talking about their the good qualities that he loves and like you know the ones that they need to work on. So like when he talks about the different churches, you can also apply those to like like today, right? Like there's there's churches where they do this, this, and this, but this one thing, yeah. right? So then like we can fit somehow, some way in the church. Mm -hmm. Cause I know that um, when he was talking to those people, this is like the early church, this is like the pure, pure church, right? So like these people were like, like literally to the death. And then it was like, this man Jesus just left he flipped everybody's heads, the cultural, the, the political, the everything, like all the structures. He just like, like, ah, this man's causing riots. Literally, Jesus was causing riots, right? So it's like all these things were going on. Then all of a sudden he dies. And then he, his, his followers claimed that he came back. And then there was a multitude of people that saw him come back at the same time. So it's like either 500 people had the exact same delusion at the exact same time in different places. And then they happen to come back, you know, you know, they lied about it and they tried to, nah, I, I don't know if you can, 500 people at the exact same time, then they come and say, yo, did you see, I saw, yo, yo, you know, so it's like, and then that happens and then he leaves and then he gives them the revelation of this, right, of himself and what would happen later. So like, when I hear that, it's, it, it really just like hits the, like the part of, like persecution will always happen. Yeah. Right. Like kind of like what he's saying, like you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. And he's like, he's basically just like, yo, like these things will happen. Like Satan will try to test you. Right. So like, like us getting tested is like a good thing. People think it's like, it hurts, but it's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So like all the persecution, it sucks, but it's kind of a good thing for your faith, at least course, in yeah. terms of that. So talking about like because like the last part of the verse says be faithful until death so it's like be faithful to the point to where like you're willing to even lose your life you know to not deny jesus right because if you deny him then he would deny you for his father and everything like that so that that plays a part and i just think is this is wild and uh because i asked him earlier we we'll just give you guys a run through of all the stuff we already talked about. We should, we should have really <laughs> we talked about it. We, really, we really should have recorded it. Yeah, but he was I, saying. That. I asked him about just like the state of the world and whether we run out of resources or like you know famine and everything like that. Um, and he mentioned that you know like famine is is I don't know, but it's like we have enough food to feed everybody. But like the way that the food is distributed around the world, right? The way the system works, the way the the things are put into place they're put into place in a specific way so that people will feel like there's not enough or that they're not educated to know that like okay, this is designed for this way this is like why this is the way that it is um how that fits into persecution i don't know um well i would say it makes it easier to persecute people that are in the dark right because if, if you fool a lot of the people like most of the world is fooled. It's like a real life matrix that blows my mind. Like you want to do the red pill and okay. find out all well, the rabbit yeah, holes. So the red stuff. pill was what? It was like you go into the rabbit hole, you find out the truth, right? The truth, okay. Then the blue, the blue pill is like just, just go back to your world and okay. you know, go to your nine to five and all that oh, stuff. Cool. You so like, the red pill? Hmm? you were taking the red pill. In terms of <laughs> receiving the Holy Spirit, sure. Yeah. <laughs> what if you were no? Let's say you were Neo, and then Morpheus came up and was like. What would you have chosen? Would you have followed the truth? Would yeah, bro. Oh, easy. I'm like, you said what? <laughs> oh, bro, slime, you know. Bob, so. If you had never seen The Matrix, just watch The Matrix. It's beautiful. Yeah, like. The fight scene is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. The karate scene. I like that one. Yeah, it's pretty dope. <laughs> The new the new Matrix is it's, 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 it's uh awful. yeah it's not it's that awful. good but <laughs> it's boring bro it's so yeah, long it's, it's, I'm gonna watch it though because I didn't finish it but I'm gonna still watch it because it's just like you know Peter Spencer Neo you know? yeah I wa I watched it like on the way back from Africa bro I was you like, had the time 
Bro, I had <laughs> so much time. time. I watched like 10 movies. You like, had the time. how many movies did I actually watch? I you think I literally time, watched bro. like six movies <laughs> on the airplane. Like, all while being on the airplane, not at the airport, no, but at the airplane. In the airplane, I know. They have a great collection of movies. It's fantastic. They do, they do. Okay, but good go, to going, you. Going back to the thing. What were you talking about, though? Persecution and famine and food. Oh, yeah. So, like, this like if, if, you, if you make it, like, kind of like, um... If you could poison your enemy right before you fought them, they'd be way weaker, right? right. Or it's kind of like that. Like you're kind of slowly poisoning them, or s like keeping them in a place where it's easier to control them, right? Like if you have somebody in a darkened room for a long time, <laughs> it's easier to get into their head than it is like they're out and about living life, you know, mm -hmm. being nutritious to their body and all that other stuff, and doing whatever activities. But if you lock them in a cell, like the the prison systems in America are designed to do, it's like designed to break you, right? So like if you put a in there and then you try controlling them it's going to be a little easier after you break them right or it's going to be easier to access into their brain yeah. kind of like uh with slavery back then it was like they had to break the 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 minds of the slaves so that they would willingly give up their will to like you know the master and like be fueled by fear fear and anger and all that stuff so then because it's a it's a decision like like straight up like whatever kanye said like it is literally a decision who made decisions they're just like yeah i'm, I'm not doing this anymore and then either they fight back they run away successfully or they, or they, they get, get killed, killed yeah. running away they but they killed. still made a decision like yeah I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not a slave right so it's like like with all this stuff when you basically um tell them like one or two things and then drill it into their heads they're going to believe just those one or two things. And then that's way easier to control. And then when now, now that you have them like, like, oh, oh, in their puppets, you can tell them stuff about Christianity and all this other stuff. That's lies or like paint a picture of what Christianity is. Mm -hmm. And then now it's way easier for other Christians to persecute the real Christians. Right. And then, then those Christians are like, y'all ain't real Christians. Cause the Bible says this, you can read it too. And we're like saying it in love. And they're like, no, I was like, what? Like, did, <laughs> you you have the same book that i have like what what's the real you know so then it's like it all goes back to like they're being controlled and all this other stuff right. and then the masses support those christians who persecute the real christians and it's, it just it's just like bro so like all that controlling the distribution is just for like having control of most of the world i mean there's a few people that kind of break out of it due to god's grace and all that other stuff like we do but you know The queen is dead, by the way, guys. Yeah, he just told me earlier. Yeah, it's, he didn't know. How do you not yeah. know the queen is dead? I stay out of. I got like, it from Apple News. Apple News let me know <laughs> that the said, queen is dead. <laughs> I don't even have. I didn't even know I had Apple News on my iPad because it was literally on my iPad. I remember I was sitting. I was sitting down. I went doo -doo, and then I looked <laughs> over and said, <laughs> "Queen Elizabeth has died at 96 years old." I was like, "Well, That's the queen insane. is dead." But man, there's a. There's a, there's a resource that I follow uh, called uh, Voice of the Martyrs, so V-O-N, and it, it details it details persecution uh, much more than I guess we see here, you know, mm -hmm. because these people, right, it's a, most, they're usually third world countries, and also like Pakistan, Africa, of course, like Nigeria, and, you know, the Middle East, uh, and so they have stories of people, men and women and children, who are, who are dealing with persecution like on a daily basis you know they can't work right they don't have they can't get resources to be able to provide for their family or kids and everything like that simply because they put their faith in jesus and mostly most of these most of these men and women and children they're coming from right from maybe like a muslim background or maybe from a hindu background um and they're leaving their faith into jesus and but they don't they start experiencing persecution even from their husbands right because Husbands will leave their wives as if like, why, what are you doing? You know, like we are supposed to be in this way, but you want to be here. So the, the husband is going to leave the wife or even possibly report, like you said earlier of telling the authorities or he may, he might even just take actions, actions into one, his own hands mm -hmm. and, and, and kill them. Um, yeah. Like this side note, just like in like uh, the Quran, it like, it's written that like, it's lawful for you to like let's say your brother or your daughter or your wife or wife or whoever like like converts to christianity because they see christianity as like 
because we've associated something outside of God as God. So like when when you associate a human being to be God, that's like the biggest like no, don't ever associate anything with God. No one is no one or nothing is comparable to Allah, which is just God in Arabic, right? Um, so like if somebody goes to Christianity and they were once a Muslim, you lawfully can actually kill them. Like and 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 you have no blood stains on your hands in terms of like, you know, Allah finding you on judgment day, right? Because then because now you've you've helped the world you've helped the world get rid of somebody that basically like associated something that is not God to be God, right? Mm -hmm. So like when when all these persecutions are going on, it's like sometimes it's lawful, like I was saying earlier, to actually be able to kill or persecute them. Or like you said, they can't get jobs, they can't feed their families, they get left, like families get broken apart, then they get ostracized, and then they just get singled out, and then like nobody starts, nobody stop, talks to them. It's just a, a bunch of levels of like, just like, like yo, like what is, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, Former Ethiopian, former Ethiopian, Sheik, Sheik, yeah, yeah. Sheik, burned, which is like a is a Islamic pastor. No, burned down, burned houses, own house burned after conversion. And Nigerian widow mother repeatedly attacked by extremists, uh, and so this is on their website, by the way. Right, so this, this is, is so like, this is V O M, and so you guys can check it out. But like, you guys can feel it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll put the link below, yeah. and I think he said there's a YouTube video. Yeah. I'll put that below. And so it gives, it's, like, you you get a free uh, magazine subscription every month, and which which I get at my house. Um, and, and just read about, and just read about, right, other brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, right, outside of what we see here in the United States, because Christianity is not just in the United States. It's global. It's worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere, right? So... The same way that I'm sitting next to T.S., he's my brother in Christ. The same way that my brother, right, who whose house got burned down after conversion in another country, and and um, Maynard, Maynard, how do you say that word? Neymar, Neymar, Neymar. Yeah. I'm saying Neymar. Neymar is he's he, like we're brothers in we're brothers in Christ together, mm -hmm. right? So the persecution he's going through as a follow as a fellow believer with him, right? My spirit, right, it weeps for him. Like it, 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 it has a righteous kind of like anger because it's like, you know, he's being treated that way as he is my brother or sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the purpose of me wanting to talk about persecution for this discussion was just to give people, I guess, a resource to, to kind of just like educate themselves beyond just what we see here in the United States yeah. and get educated and know, have some knowledge of Christianity, how what Christianity is like in other countries besides this because you can go here you can go to church you can be straight you know you can go through your routine and everything like that and but there's other people who are dying for the same faith that you believe in mm -hmm. right but to them it's a much more right it's a like, much yeah like it's literally life or death yeah. like like you so like over here we have to think Oh, like, what will my friend say? What will my mom or dad say? Over there, they're like, okay, do I want to live or die? <laughs> like, that's literally like, how, what? Okay, do I want to be able to feed my family or not? Do yeah. do do I want to be able to to like get married or not? Right? Like, and and ultimately, do I want to get thrown in jail or die in jail? Right? Because like jails in different countries, they're not the same as America. Right? right. Like, so so that yeah, there there's a they have like a higher. Like they're thinking about like more basic fundamental things like life or death, right? Like being like completely, what's it called? Um, disowned, like what's it, like when you're thrown out of your family? Oh, disowned. Disowned from your family. Like like there's uh, the late Nabil Qureshi, right? Like when he, cause he was a Muslim that converted to uh, Christianity and his, his dad, his, his like own dad didn't go to his wedding, right? Like that hurts and your dad is alive. Like that, that's not, that's the, you know, that's, that's like, that hurts to like know that my dad is alive and is willingly and openly admitting my son is dead. It's like, no, your son's right here with you and I still love you. I just happen to have found the living God, right? But it's, it's like one of those things where like America, we're, we're chilling in other first world countries like that, that aren't going through like that level of persecution. Um, it, and, and and that's that's what um, 
like Paul and them went through in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, I guess, uh, where now now you you are you are doing spiritual warfare by like praying for protection and praying for resources and things like that. Or you could be a part of it and actually if if you feel God is calling you to it and join a group like this or start one that will help people that yeah. are getting persecuted in other countries. Because like half of the ministries that start, they don't just start because like Oh, like I want to start a mini, like ministry because of X Y Z. Usually, like you know, like for me, the reason why I post like uh, uh, videos about like mental disorder with the whole schizophrenia and casting out demons is because I went through it, right? So somebody that they know went through or they saw it themselves and they're like, nah, this is not, this can't happen on my watch, right? So then they decide to go do something about it. Like even the disciples had to decide, like, well, they had to, they had to contemplate every single day. I might not come back today, right? Like, if I go preach down the street, I might not see my wife or kids. Like, Peter thought that, like, pretty much every day, right? We could, we could assume that, we could safely assume he thought that. So like, like, Paul, you know, like, I might not see my friends anymore. You know, like, if, if I go travel to this country, I might not come back. If I go do this, I might get uh, shipwrecked and then, well, not shipwrecked. Well, I might get, like, killed on the way there, right? Or, or I might get beheaded or something, right? Something extreme. And, and, and just another side note that the Christians back then, like, because Rome, like, the Christians were willing to die. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, oh, we're going to burn you if, you if you don't give up Jesus. Okay. <laughs> you know, and then I right, gather them up, burn them. And then they're literally dropping like flies because they're like, I'm not giving up this faith just because you're scaring me with death. Because yeah. now that God has overcome death, we're like, oh, what's death, bro? What's I have death? Jesus. Yeah. Right? right. So then, but then eventually they're like, okay. They're literally not going to give up. Like, they're, So then they just started joining us. And then that's where the Roman Catholic Church came and all that stuff. Catholicism. And then and then that's where Christians started getting power. They started coming into like the political realm. They started getting money. They started getting influence. Because all these Christians were dying. And they're like, if we keep killing them. Like, and, and this, it was growing faster than they could kill them basically, right? So like, it's like, so it was a whole thing like that. And then. So they have to join them and all that. So then the persecution was welcomed, right? So it was like, like oh, you want to kill us? All right, bro, go ahead. Like, they would literally get tortured and they wouldn't give up their faith. But now it's like we're in America where it's like we're so sensitive. Like, oh, my gosh, he said, he said Jesus is Lord. It's like, bro, like, it's okay. Like, your feelings will get hurt. And I will say it openly, you know? I'll say it in a loving manner, right? But I won't, you know, I'm not going to overlook the truth because your feelings will be hurt like your feelings are secondary to truth sorry that's hard that's hard man i, I can just i i just uh, when you were talking i just uh thought about timothy i mean no not timothy S stefan mm. and how he was he was stoned and paul was there right saw at the time Right, and he witnessed uh, Stephen getting getting stoned and, and killed and everything like that. And so when Paul was converted, right, it was like Jesus told him, "I'm going to show you the things which you must suffer." And Paul went through a lot of persecution Ooh, that man. And, and, and everything like that. And so probably like besides Jesus, of course, you know, the most persecution for any human. Because I can just because through all the stuff that Paul went through. This man probably was like this. Is what the pastor, the pastor told me, the pastor was talking about, like Paul was probably he probably had had, had a limp because this man was getting beaten. And so oh, if he was walking, yeah, yeah. it's like, and the way that he got around, it wasn't in a car, like it wasn't on a bike. Like yeah, this there man, was none was, of that. <laughs> like this man was walk, was bro. on feet yeah. or maybe a horse, if yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? But I mean, he probably lost his horse because he was no longer right. He was in no longer like viewed in the high esteem anymore because once he mm -hmm. followed Christ, he pretty much lost his ranking. Yeah, all and that stuff. All that stuff ran like, away. It's like Nicodemus, right? When Nicodemus helped out Jesus um, from the tomb, is like, and then he ended up getting killed as well, right? It's like you, you, you. When persecution come, you will lose. You will lose something. You have to lose. Like something has to be sacrificed for you to follow Jesus. I think that's a really that's a really good point. Is you have. Some you have to lose something. Like something has to be willing. Like you have to sacrifice something. It's like when you come to God, right? You're coming with sacrifices. Like you're laying down your entire your life, your entire life, your your well, be even your well being, literally, right? Your resources, everything that you own, 
right? Because Paul was a man of like, you can even think of him as like almost as high as the president, right? Or even the queen, because he was smart, intelligent. He had all the resources. They gave him letters to be able to go and kill people. And yeah, so like, tough, so like this man had it every, like, if he wanted to go and kill somebody, he's like, hey, I need a letter to go kill this man. So yeah. sign it into order. And yeah. he was a king, like Hebrews of the, like he had all the, whatever you credentials, the rankings, the ratings, credentials, everything. He had the status and everything. all of that, when he was converted, whew, gone, no, and no longer. And so when persecution comes, it will require sacrifice. And because sacrifice, persecution is definitely going to come. And so even within yourself, you don't even like your own desires and flesh and, and will uh, and passions and pursuits. Um, those two will have to be sacrificed in order to follow Jesus. Um, and I and I just and I just and I and it's just like that and it's baffling, you know, and I, I love I love that. um I think Jesus Jesus talks to the crowd and he says, right, if you're not willing to like hate your mother or your brother or your brother or your family, right, even your own life, you cannot be my disciple. Um, I think that was Luke 14. Yeah, and so you have to you have to take that into consideration. It is it's a choice, right? It's like it is a choice. And you you said something about earlier. He was talking earlier about uh, we were talking about slavery, and he said like the people who were in slavery, like they had to make a choice. It's like at some point they're like, all right, I'm sick of this. So I'm either gonna run away, I'm gonna fight back, or I'm gonna be willing to be killed. And so when it when it comes to Jesus, it's like, I'm either willing to give my entire life to this thing and go uh, all in or just, you know, kind of go with the crowd in a way, but. I mean, that that's the part where, like Jesus says, if you don't give me your whole life, don't even. <laughs> Like, just stay away, you know? Because it's like, it, it's just, that's that's the part where I think, like, because kind of like what I was saying with earlier with the Roman church, with the Roman uh, Catholicism, how it started, there were, all these Christians were willing to get killed, and then they're like, okay, they're not going to stop, like, you know, uh, they're not going to stop, they're not going to leave Jesus, because, like, death was, like, that number one thing that, like, oh, like, listen to the king or whatever, or like, die, or, or you're going to die, like, oh, I don't want to die family kids oh whatever right so then it's like they're like okay kill me then you know so then and then as soon as they got like into the thing into like money power and all that stuff that's when people started softening up and like oh well you know it's not that bad anymore thanks jesus but then that turned into like i don't really need jesus because he provided all these things for me already now i have the power the money now i can actually feed my kids now i can do this now i can do that now i can do this and then and then the the mindset after a few generations might have passed like oh well you know like god is good we're we're christians and we're well off right yeah. so then th that's kind of how it turned into america where like you naturally think oh because i was raised like this and this and this and i had all these things growing up jesus was good to me it's like no, no 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 okay so what about when jesus allows like crap to go down and not just like 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 the uh the pain threshold has like really decreased right so like like if somebody loses their job they'll like go home and cry <laughs> and then like that's it right that like if i lost my job that same day i'm gonna go apply for other jobs like that's it that, that's all you got to do you know just be wise and know that there's other jobs like it's it's not you know it, but then like when when the pain threshold when it gets more serious right like people stop talking to you or or like you know you get ostracized or you get disowned or or you start calling out other people in love and they start treating you different even though you might be a family member right like the the, the things that people take more serious like family and all this other stuff and then it's like this never happened before I was following Jesus, right? And then you're just like, "What, Jesus? What's up, bro? What's like, what's on? what's going on? Like, you're, <laughs> are, are you really for me? You know?" So then, like, we start questioning, like Jesus, because crap, just like stuff is just like going into shambles sometimes, right? But Jesus allows these things so we can. He's testing us because I, I don't want I, if if I'm really gonna hire somebody for my business, I don't want them to be like halfway in and halfway out. Yeah. Like, hey, if you're not fully invested, the door is right there, and I'm gonna tell you to go to, to the door, you know? So, like, Jesus is, it's like, it, I don't know, man, it's so, 
it's so frustrating, you know, like knowing that like, that like if the time comes while we are alive right now, like now is August, 2022, no, it's September, September, 2022, right? If Jesus were to come back or like not, not come back, if like serious tribulations were to come back in America, I can guarantee you a majority of Americans will eventually break and lose like, like, oh, well, oh, if I don't have to do this, then all right, fine. You know, it's like, um, like, like give up Jesus or die right now. Right. Like if somebody came and like, you know, was threatening to like kill you or your family, right. To give up Jesus. I'm like, all right, you can go ahead and kill him. I'm not going to give up Jesus for that. I want to, let's make a deal, right? Like, I can baptize you real quick. All right, we could turn this apple juice into some water real quick, spiritual water. I'm like, phew, phew, you know, I like baptize you or something. But like, I'm not going to give up Jesus, even if other lives are at stake, right? That doesn't make any sense for me. Like, that that sounds crazy. But that that's, I've gotten to that point where it's like, oh, there's nothing better, like, the person that you're taking their life was given by Jesus. So I, you want me to give up Jesus for, no, for another human, for a job, for money, for why? It's just like, and then these people in a heartbeat, they would be like, oh, you're going to do this. I'm going to give up. I'm not giving up Jesus. Right. Just like the Hebrew boys. Right. Uh, like, like in Daniel, boys, yeah. like they, uh, they, 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 they never, it, it wasn't a thought. Like that's the, that's the craziest part. That it, it wasn't a thought for them to give up. And they even both, they even said, <laughs> to the all right, king, we ain't, bro. yeah, to the, like the, it's the king. Right? Like if <laughs> the king says you your head about. is cut off. What did you say about the house? <laughs> yeah. If the king wants your house for whatever reason, you don't ask any questions. The king wants the house. All right. All right, honey, pack up everything. Like we got to go. Right. Like, like the, cause in a dominion, right? Like in, in a kingdom, oh everything belongs God. to the king and the queen. Everything, <laughs> everything belongs to them, right? So like oh if the God. king says your head is cut off before the afternoon, <laughs> your head is cut off. Like there is no, there's no question about it, right? So when the Hebrew boys oh straight God. up said, hold on, we ain't bowing down to whatever that idol thing, right? On top of that, we believe that our God would save us. And even, even if, if he, he doesn't, doesn't, right? Even if he doesn't, we still ain't bowing down to your idol, right? So that's like, like, I'm not saying compare your, to have faith like that, but I'm saying like, that's the kind of faith that Jesus was talking about. Like, and, and like the pastors and people nowadays are like, oh, you need crazy faith. You need to like, you know, believe that when you called your friend and you told him God is still good, even though you're only good, bro, that's cool. Like that, what? But these people were like in the face of death, like they're going to die. When you die, you don't come back. You're not going to hear your mom's voice again. You're not going to hear the voice of your car or whatever, you know, like you're not going to wear the same.